what's going on guys welcome back to the channel so we're out in the shop tonight we are getting ready to do our service on the 18 wheeler i'm doing a series of videos um i've got two up already this will be the third in the series maybe it's the last one i'm not sure yet i think it will be um, but i did a oil change service at 25,500 miles um, i had a little bit of oil starvation issues i was trying to stretch the oil change out without having to add any uh, makeup oil to it and uh, my oil pressure started fluctuating i had to add a little bit to it um, so that kind of flawed the results a little bit on that one i did another video at 15,000 miles oil change uh, sample it came back normal this one here we went for 41,069 miles on uh, 1122 engine hours is what i figured up i'll show you where i got that wrote down in there in a minute um, but anyway that's where we're at now because i did not change it at 15,000 mile mark um, I added makeup oil to it. I added, uh, I think it was three gallons or about three gallons. I got it out of a five gallon bucket uh, with a pump, but it was roughly three gallons, maybe slightly over. Um, so I've added three gallons of makeup oil and 41,000 miles, and it is a little bit low now. So uh, I've got everything set up here on my uh, cluttered up toolbox workbench. I'm um, gonna catch some oil in the cup. Um, this is the sample bottle that will be put inside a Ziploc bag with some oil absorbent stuff. Put in this bottle, goes back to Blackstone oil analysis. And uh, that way we can show you guys what the results are and whether we did any damage running this that long or not. This is gonna be, um, to, to get whatever sample doesn't go in here, I wanna keep some here. That way, um, if this gets lost in the mail here, I can uh, send this sample here and then I'm gonna catch in this clean water bottle. And that way, if they lose the first sample, I still got a backup because I'm really curious of what, uh, how this is going to turn out because I've never run uh, this long on an oil change. I know some of the bigger fleets and everything do. I've never run that long. I don't know if we're causing any damage or not, but I figured it was worth um, the, the risk and everything just for the scientific part of it. Um, if you want to go by engine hours, uh, some of these tests were done during the winter. Some of them were done during the summer. I have a bunk heater on my truck, so I don't run the engine at idle during the, uh, I mean, during the winter. Um, I do have an APU, a battery operated APU for the summer, but it does not work very well. So I usually wind up running my truck during the summer because it's too hot and uh, that battery APU will kill my batteries quickly. But during the winter time, I can run uh, that bunk heater and uh, it'll keep the truck warm and me warm. And so I don't have to idle the engine during the winter. So anyway, um, I think their first oil change um, was at like 800 engine hours. That was the one at 25,500 miles. Our second oil change at 15,000 was 400 hours. And this one here, like I say, is 1,122 hours. Okay, so here's where I keep uh, my oil changes uh, written down at. Uh, right here is the one that we're doing now at 1,073,590. And that is... 34,722 engine hours. The previous one um, was done at 33,600 engine hours and uh, 1,032,521 miles. So that is where the, uh, the last oil chain was done. As I say, we did take an oil sample in between these two changes that I did not change the oil. I just added makeup oil to it. So there was a uh, Three gallons of makeup oil added on this oil change and it is low now. Um, also added um, some zinc in there with it. I'll talk about that in just a second. All right, so this is the zinc that I use, the additive. Um, I usually put four bottles of this in. That's what I had done on the 25,000 mile oil change that I did and the 15,000 mile oil change. Um, but seeing as how I was extending this on out to 41,000 miles like I did, I was planning on going for 40, 1,000 miles over what my target was. Anyway, since uh, I extended this out, whenever I added my makeup oil, the three gallons of makeup oil, when I did my service at 15,000 miles, or well, I didn't do service, I did, I greased everything, but I didn't change the oil. So I went over to service the truck and checked everything out, greased everything, but I did not change the oil, I just added makeup oil. I added an extra bottle of this in there. Um, so that made five bottles of this um, throughout the lifetime of this 41,000 miles because I diluted the oil that was in there by adding the three gallons of engine oil back to it. So that diluted uh, my zinc levels. So I added one extra bottle of zinc on that. 
So for this oil change here that we're doing, um, all total, we had it full of oil. We added three gallons of makeup oil, uh, one gallon of Lucas, and uh, five bottles of zinc as, uh, for the whole 41,000 miles. Um, I started out with the four bottles of zinc, added the one. So uh, let's see if we can get this stuff changed. So this is my oil drain pan right here and my pump that I use uh, to transfer this into a barrel or tank. Um, it seems to be fairly well empty right now, so we'll go ahead and use that. I messed up my hose, run over my hose from my pump. I'll have to fix that before I can empty the pan, but we can go ahead and get the oil, oil changed, drained out of the truck. Well, it's about half full. It'll hold, it'll hold about two oil changes. So let me get that situated up on the truck. I've already got the truck uh, parked up on blocks. I like to drive it on these uh, four by sixes here. And I used to just drive it on the front, but I've got to where it's a little bit more trouble, but I'll go ahead and drive it on the back as well. Put some uh, four by six blocks down on the back. It's a little bit of a trick to get it up on there um, like that. You put, uh, put one block down touching the tire on one, one drive axle, and then your other drive axle, move your block forward um, about five or six inches so that it's not trying to go up on all the blocks at the same time. You want one axle to start up on the blocks and then the other one to start up on the blocks and you can, you can drive it up there that way. That gives you a whole lot more clearance on the bottom of the truck here to get up under there um, because the air suspension has got to go down. This truck has an air ride front axle and everything. It also needs to be washed. It's quite dirty. It's been raining a lot and everything. But anyway, that's what we're going to take care of. We're going to get it all serviced out, cleaned up, all that good stuff. So I want to take just a minute to talk about why I even bother to add this zinc additive that I do. And um, that is because these Cummins ISX engines were built or designed back in the late 90s. They were probably actually designed uh, in the mid 90s. Um, anyway, the zinc levels in the oil and the diesel engine oil back then were around 1,450 parts per million based on the research that I have done. Um, the modern current day oil after 2007, they may have even reduced it uh, since then is around 1150 to 1200. And um, so that is a reduction in the zinc. They did that in 2007. It was mandated by the EPA because uh, the zinc is harmful to the diesel particulate filter and to catalytic converters, um, which the gasoline engine oil does not have the higher levels of zinc that the diesel oil does. Um, but all across the board, they are reducing the zinc levels and have reduced the zinc levels in the oil and I think that is a lot of the reason why we're seeing the camshaft failures out of a lot of different vehicles. Uh, I've heard it with Ford, GM, um, you know, Cummins. All, every manufacturer's had some kind of camshaft issues that I've run across on some of these newer engines. And I think it very well could be related to this. Um, I'm not 100% certain of that, but I very think it could be related. Uh, I very well think it could be related. And uh, I have wiped up two camshafts on my previous Cummins ISX engine. And I'm not saying that it was 100%, you know, zinc levels may have not 100% been what the deal was. The engine had a lot of wear on it. Um, could have been a lack of, uh, you know, some oil pressure through the top end. Um, but adding a little zinc to it couldn't hurt, I think, because of the reduced levels of zinc in the oil from when the engine was designed and built. Um, this is common knowledge on flat tappet cams and a performance application such as hot rods or whatever. If you do not add the zinc, you will wipe a brand new camshaft out shortly. Um, these are roller cams in these engines, but they do have quite a bit of spring pressure on them. And that's where I'm seeing the issue at, or on the last engine I've seen the issue at, was on the top of the lobe, um, it would start galling and, and flaking off the camshaft, just like you would see in a hot rod application on a flat tappet cam. So I started adding some of this in there, and that's part of the reason I'm doing this testing and stuff to see how much of this is in there and be able to read the zinc levels and stuff from the lab when we send this off. And that'll all be on the report here when we get it back from the uh, lab. Uh, it shows the zinc levels compared to other people's oil level, zinc levels in their oil and all that. And that's what I found is about four bottles for uh, the 10 or 11 gallons that this thing's hold. And uh, so that's what I do. Um, a lot of people say I'm wasting my time, it doesn't work, yada, yada, yada. If you feel that way, don't add it. You know, I'm just uh, showing what I do and explaining why I do it and why I think it works. And hopefully I won't have any problems with it. If I do, you know, I'll document it. But that's the reason I add it is to try to prolong any camshaft issues or whatever on a higher mileage engine. Um, so anyway, let's get this oil changed.
All right, so I want to make sure there's no dirt around that plug, which it is pretty, pretty clean up under there. And I'm going to crack the plug loose, let some of it run out, and then we're going to stick our cup under it. That way we don't get a, we'll let whatever, dirt, whatever, um, run on out of there so we don't catch the dirt in the cup. We want to have a, a good clean oil sample to be able to send off. got our good clean cup here so that we can catch this and be able to pour it in our bottle. Just curious what the lab results is going to be. 1122 engine hours. How bad it's going to be or if it's not that bad. It's a cup full of it. A lot of uh, the newer engines are actually recommended on some of this larger stuff. You know, a thousand hour oil changes. So uh, I just want to see, kind of curious of what this is going to be, uh, what it's going to turn out to be, and what uh, what are levels, uh, fuel dilution, and all that stuff is going to be. Of course, that's affected by your engine idle time and whatnot. So let me get my hands cleaned up and we'll, we'll try to get this, uh, probably need to pour just a little bit of this back out or I'm going to make a big mess. So this is our bottle that we have to send back. A little piece of something in there, I don't know what it was. Supposedly a clean bottle was sent from them. We're doing it this way. There's no way you'd ever do this without making a mess any other way. We might make a mess anyway. But hopefully not. just a little bit from the top so it don't spill out put our lid on there good and then we have to uh, make a, a label for that or whatever fill out a thing for it and then you put it inside of a ziplock bag or you wrap it in this uh, oil absorbent cloth then you put it inside of a ziplock bag then you put it inside of this container and all of that ensures that there's no way that they could possibly get spilt so now we're going to put the rest of our sample here into this bottle. That way, if they lose that, I still got this. I will label it as what it is. And uh, hopefully we can send this in if that becomes an issue. I was a little worried last time they had lost my sample because uh, it took it quite a while to get to them. So we definitely don't want to lose this sample at 41,000 miles because I've never run it that far. And I would not want to do it again without seeing some kind of results, what this is going to tell us. Hopefully good results, right?
So that is enough probably for two or three more sample sizes. So if they lose it, we got enough oil there to send it to them about two more times. But surely they won't lose it that many times. You tell I got a lot of faith in the postal service and mail carriers and general freight carriers and all. I don't even trust them with the oil sample. But anyways, um, that should do that. The next uh, next part of this will be when we get our sample back and I'll show you guys all the results. So we gotta get our oil filter off. That's what I use to remove the oil filter. That's a new oil filter. Um, there's no way I can film that under there um, because it is uh, way up in under yonder, down in behind that airbag that you can't even see. Way in there behind the turbo that you can't see. But anyway, um, that's what I gotta do, get up under there and get that thing fished out. Our oil drain pan is just about full there. There's a filter on it down there. I kind of missed the uh, kind of missed the pan there a little bit on the on the side of it. I didn't have it uh, where it exactly needed to be. But uh, this thing works pretty good. I built this out of a uh, it was a toolbox from uh, Tractor Supply. It was one of those underbody toolboxes that mount onto the side under your trailer or side of a truck or something. Um, it was four foot long and I think they're 18 inches this way and it was 18 inches this way. And what happened was um, I was unloading at a place. This was on my trailer, my old trailer. And uh, I had the door open and I was still trying to get my straps off and everything, full flatbed. And a uh, forklift driver run up there and crushed the door on it before I was able to get my straps off and get it, uh, get it closed up. And so they had to buy me a new toolbox because you cannot buy just the door so I cut the, uh, I discarded the door and cut the box down to whatever the height that is and simply bought some wheels and put on it, made me a handle up here and put a valve in the end of it and put a couple dividers in it um, to keep, kind of help with sloshing and so that I could lay that uh, expanded metal on there. There's a couple videos on my channel if you're interested in doing something like that, but you can probably buy one cheaper than you could buy those boxes. I think these boxes are pretty expensive these days. Used to, they wasn't, but uh, about 300 bucks, but they probably went up by, by now. But anyway, that's what that uh, started out as, as a underbody toolbox that a uh, forklift driver crushed and they had to buy me a new box. So I went and got a new box and uh, kept the old one and cut it and made me an oil drain pan. So I switched over to Traveler Engine Oil 1540 when they had the shortage of Rotella. And I've been buying it in uh, five gallon buckets from Tractor Supply, the Traveler. And I got this pump rigged up. Last thing I pumped this, used this pump for was pumping uh, hydraulic fluid. So I need to flush this pump out. All right, we're good to go. This pump is uh, for pumping diesel fuel. I usually take the funnel out, but just do it this way, show you guys. It works pretty well. Uh, it works real well on diesel fuel, uh, hydraulic fluid, and it does pretty well on the engine oil as long as it's warm. Like uh, it's been 90 degrees today and this oil keeps, is kept out in my shop. And uh, so the oil is, is warm, you know, probably 80 degrees or so, and it pumps it fine. Uh, if you do a oil change in the winter and this oil gets down to like 40 degrees, it'll still pump it, but it pumps really, really, really slow. And uh, it takes forever to get five gallons pumped in there. So that's a pretty good flow rate right there. It shouldn't take very long to get uh, five gallons pumped in here, hopefully. I know it gets old trying to hold that five gallon pail up and you can only pour it so fast and uh, it will start flowing out the funnel and if you get too much in the funnel that funnel will rotate over the other side I've tried a couple different funnels on this truck and none of them just work great but this is what I've come up with that works the best so far if you guys are timing it you can see how long it uh, 
I'll, I'll play this at regular speed and everything and you guys can see how long it takes to pump out five gallons. She wrote. So that's five gallons. I'll try to remember to put a link uh, to this pump and stuff, uh, or I may just link to another video that I did a review on in the description. If anybody's interested in anything like that. So this is our second bucket of oil here. And the way I got this pump rigged up, I just got a piece of pipe on it, put it in the side of it. And uh, a washer to keep the dirt out. And then it just slips down in your bucket. Just like that. Got it the right length so that that, uh, that tube, instead of being uh, cut off flat at the end, I've got a couple notches in it um, with a grinding disc so that it uh, doesn't sit flat on the bottom. It has a little bit of a notch in there. And that's uh, yeah, pretty well all the oil out of there. So anyway. This thing hold uh, all of this oil right here, these two five gallon buckets. This pump will generally run about uh, nine minutes or so, I think, on a battery. Something like that. On diesel fuel, it'll pump about seven gallons a minute, just over seven gallons a minute through a filter. I have two of these pumps. I got one set up uh, with a filter to pump diesel fuel. And I have this one here uh, set up with no filter to pump uh, engine oil and hydraulic fluid. I use it to put hydraulic fluid in my tractor, my dozer, and that sort of stuff. I was gonna get a third one, that way I wouldn't have to uh, swap this one back and forth because I, I waste a little bit of uh, a fluid every time I swap it back and forth. our second five gallon bucket we're still on the first battery so we must be under the eight or nine minute mark that it'll run on one battery And I'll put this battery back on charge before I forget. Um, that's one of the, the issues I have with these uh, pumps is uh, every time I pick one of them up, the battery's dead because I forget to put them back on charge. All right, guys, so I've got the oil change wrapped up there. I'm going to go ahead and finish up greasing everything. And uh, I will see you guys back whenever we get this sample here back from the lab and we can go over the results. All right, guys, so we got the oil sample 
uh, back or the analysis back from the oil sample I should say um, this was at 41,000 miles these are your miles up here at the top uh, if you can see that this was the first uh, one at well no this was the first one I did at 25.5 I did a second one at 15,000 and then I did this third one at 41,000 and um, they're saying that um, it's got a bunch of lead in the in the oil from the bearings um, which the thing's got a million one on it right at it um, so I'm sure that you know the engine's got quite a bit of wear on the bearings by now but these are the averages based off of the uh, the engines like this that they test this is a uh, ISX uh, 2006 model which would be a CM870 and uh, for lead um, the universal averages is 3 and my first one was 49 uh, second one was 11 which was better and then 73 on this one but uh, as far as engine hours I think I said in the first part of the video um, I did this one I think at about 800 this one was 400 and something. This one was almost 1,200 engine hours. Um, but other than that, um, they said the oil sample looked pretty good. And um, all the values and everything um, appear to be pretty decent. Um, so basically, it just, you know, the wear on the engine. And you can pause this video if you want to and take a look at the, uh, the chart here a little bit better. Let's see if I can zoom that in a little bit for you kind of tell a little bit more about it there but so that's what they're saying you know uh it's just got you know bearing material in there everything else looks good uh my zinc levels i, I did say that i had some zinc and stuff to it i actually had a clip of me um with the funnel in there pouring the uh the zinc and stuff and the oil and the and the gallon of lucas i had and i had the lucas because um like i say the engine's got a lot of miles and bearing wear and the lucas helps boost the oil pressure a little bit um, if it wasn't for that, I would not probably add the Lucas. But, uh, yeah, anyway, the uh, the zinc levels um, is down here, 1395. The first one was 1365. The second one was 1502. Um, so these are my averages compared to everybody else's averages. You can tell I got a little bit, uh, get a little bit higher zinc um, in my samples here because I'm adding that in there. And the same thing on the Molly that additive has that in there. So you can see those numbers there. But yeah, everything else seems to be uh seems to be normal, so I'm gonna keep running the thing and see how she does. Thanks for watching.